Yeah, man. The name is Sharp. You catch me, man, on the Bootleg Kev podcast. You know it's going down like the ground that we walk on. Come get on my time zone, man. Bootleg Kev podcast special guest in here. You know what the fuck it is. Let's talk about it. Sharp. <laughs> Let's get it. Welcome. So, Thank you for having me. First of all, um, I have quite a history in Las Vegas. You know, I used to do uh, afternoons at Hot 97.5 out there. Mm. So right on the strip. Somebody might have heard you once or twice. I used to live off of the 15 in Craig. Yeah, I know where that's at. So that's that's a, out of uh, North. Yeah, North Side, yeah. Yeah, so it's North. To, and uh, yeah, man, I love I, Vegas is... Um, Kind of like my, I love it out there, man. It's yeah. like one of my second, if I like, it's like my second home, low key. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, you're a Vegas guy. Yeah, I love Vegas, man. You know what I'm saying? It's definitely, yeah, Vegas, my, that's my home too, for sure. Yeah. There in Dago, yeah, man. It's my spots. How long, um, like, so were you originally from San Diego or Vegas? No, I'm originally from Detroit. Okay, originally from you Detroit. Yeah, How long have you been to the in West Vegas? Coast? Shit, man. My mama moved me to the West Coast when I was probably like two, one and a half, two. So when I was in, so being born in Detroit, I never, uh, like I like I said, I can't tell you no streets or nothing out there. Right, I can't of course, tell you of course, of course. I never lived out there, of but course. I moved to the West Coast. And like I said, man, shit, all my people have been taking me to Dago shit since I was like 12, 13. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Start riding with my homies and then shit, you know? I kind of got a lot of my season from around there, you know, especially bouncing back from both places, you know what I'm saying? Because Vegas is fast just within itself. Vegas is crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? I was there, man, shit, before some of the casinos got tore down. No, was Vegas is front. wild. Yeah, no, for sure, man. It's definitely, uh, it, it changes every day. The thing about Vegas is, like you said, like, you could go there and not be there for, like, two months and come back and be like, the fuck? They put, the, how'd they build this so fast? Or they knocked this shit down? Or this shit got thrown up? It's crazy. Yeah, man. let you know that life moves without you, whether you're there or not. A hundred percent, man. That, just the whole, like, uh, Vegas lifestyle is one, like, yeah. once you leave Vegas, it's very hard to shake that lifestyle. Like, it took yeah. me a while to, like... Get back into like normal, like yeah. I be trying to leave nightclubs holding drinks and shit. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? like, yeah no, shit closed down at two o'clock. A lot of right. other places, hell, the whole city shuts down. Right. You know, Vegas twenty four seven. Man, you can get whatever, whenever, however, twenty four hours mm-hmm. a day, seven days a week. The uh, yeah, and then obviously just the hustle out there. It's crazy because Vegas is like I feel like I, it really helped me to live there because it kind of put a permanent battery in my back that never went away. Yeah, because I feel like the city of Vegas, you gotta be out there grinding. It's a yeah. it's a hospitality city. Yeah. Like everyone's on the on the grind. Like whether you're parking cars, whether yeah. you're fucking, yeah. you know. I think that's probably why, um, no artists really blew up out of there. Not saying there hasn't been people that's came out of there because there has been, and they don't claim it. They won't say, "Hey, I'm from Las Vegas." You know, they'll be the closest was the, probably Dizzy, Dizzy Wright. Dizzy, yeah, him. Dizzy claims obviously Baby Keem's from Vegas. He's on yeah. a tour with Kendrick. Yeah, but there was a lot of great artists that just didn't get over the top. Yeah, you know. Whether, I think uh, it, I think it's because and, and just just my outlook to it. Like I think it's because there's really no. Uh, not everybody see in Vegas. It, Vegas and Atlanta are different right. because Atlanta they really support their home artists. Right. They'll really like shut everything down to go to you. Know what I'm saying somebody's concert and really go and support. As of in Vegas, like it's it's a melting pot because everybody really deep down inside everybody's from somewhere somewhere else, else. for the most part. You know you're saying? right. Like a lot of like, people from the Bay, a lot of people from LA. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like the 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 uh, percentage of Las Vegans are slim Super you know what i'm small. saying they're slim so you know people think that these are a bunch of vegas people no these are people from everywhere yeah. this shit's a melting pot people are here today going they, tomorrow they got here for a job and or they they, they Pe- people, running or whatever it is people are here today gone tomorrow you know what i'm saying so there's different type of shit and different type of whether it's hustles or people scamming whatever there's there's new shit daily coming through that city you know what I'm saying? So I think that's why it's always constantly changing. But even back to like just the artists, nobody's trying to help each other because everybody's just trying to help themselves. Yeah, when I was there, like we had like a underground show on Sunday nights on the radio. So we play like fucking Interstate Fats, Radio Ramon, fucking I fuck with Interstate Fats. I think uh, Jazz I had my, Laser. one of my old schools in his video, him and uh, Lozon. Mm, fats is great. Free yep. Fats, man. I'm just texting. Yeah, that's my guy. Yeah, he's a good guy. A beast. Yeah, you're a beast, beast with it. Man. No, you're a beast incredible. with it for yeah. sure. Um, so I think like would you say like you kind of originally came onto the scene in terms of people knowing who you are outside of your city or your friend circle due to the soft white belly uh 
videos. Yeah, soft, soft white, white underbelly. underbelly. Yeah, yeah soft shout white out underbelly. Yeah. Shout out Mark Lather. That that Mark Lather. I loved your guys' interview when you had him on your show too. That shit was dope. Yeah, that one. That one right there. Uh, that one touched me, man, because it was really like a, you know, just a revolving door. It was a full circle moment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To sit there with him, it actually like made me feel a certain kind of way because I'm like, damn, you know, I'm I'm here, you know, and me doing what I did with him made me step my game up some. And like I said, bro, I never expected none of that shit, man. I just, I got into it. I got a chance at it. And I don't like to uh, disappoint myself. Anything that I've ever done, I like to be great at. And I ain't done a lot. You know what I'm saying? But whatever I did do, I made sure I was great at. And I made sure I was great to me. Mm. You know, so I did the I did the interview with him. Like when I went on there, I, bro, I promise you, man, I didn't even expect it. Like the comments was bad. You know, I didn't really. I'm like, man, I'm not used to that. I'm, I'm from the street. Anybody that got something to say to you, they going to say it to your face, you know. So mm-hmm. it's different when you see a bunch of trolls or a bunch of people sitting there making all these these comments, you know what I'm saying, that you don't even really know who it is. Motherfuckers like, man, lock him up. Why is this type of person outside? I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Right. I'm just telling you, I'm saying my past are things that I've done. Story, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Telling my story. But man, people get so fucking captivated and wrapped up and like they they feel like their way should be is the right. Like, you know what I'm saying? That that's what should happen to you, or this is where you should be. You know what I'm saying? Because you do something that ain't, you know, it's not valued to society. But shit, what is? Ain't what really true. is, man? I mean, fuck who to call me the kick, you know what I'm saying, the kettle black. Like, who who he? Also, like, I don't think people understand, like, the culture of Las Vegas, to be 100% honest. Like, at the end of the day, like, if you're from Vegas, like, it's not crazy to think that, like, you know, pimps exist and they're normal people. I know that's a crazy thing to say. let me tell you something. It's not just Vegas. It's anywhere, man. It's anywhere, but specifically, like, like, it's like Vegas is like, it's like a part of the culture there. Like They just say that because it comes with a lot of gambling, drinking, and prostitution. Mm -hmm. So you would think that it it resonates with that, and it does, but that shit's been going on everywhere. Everywhere. Chicago, the the, Bay. I mean, whatever city you're in. yeah, For 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 the longest. So I can't sit there and just pinpoint Vegas and say, oh, yeah, you know, that's the story. The, the the mecca of it because it's not it's man that shit's all over it's 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 got its pieces everywhere to me mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying because I, when I was moving I seen it everywhere it wasn't just my city that's why motherfuckers got to really get out of their backyard mm-hmm. you know I got out of the backyard so I got to see okay they moving like this over here or, you know they were the first moving time like I had this. like a any sort of interaction with pimps in Vegas. There's a place next to Little Darlings that I don't know if it's there anymore. It used to be called Kelly's Casino. Yeah, Kelly's. I was you know Kelly's? For, I was there for many years. Yo, Kelly's is- I was a, there. They tore it down. It ain't there no more. Kelly's is a wild place, bro. It ain't there no more. I've seen a lot of crazy shit yeah. go down there. So I remember, because my homie, one of my best friends- Was Nancy working when you were up in there? Older white lady. Probably. So- uh, She's there for years. One of my so best friends- Nancy Kelly's. So one of my one of my close <laughs> homies at the radio station was my boy Ron Dizzle, and Ron was not 21. So mm-hmm. the only place I could take him was fucking Little Darlings, and we were fucking with a couple of bitches at Little Darlings. Mm-hmm. So I used to be- They'd let him in Kelly's Casino, though. Yeah. So we used to just go get shit-faced to Kelly's Casino with a bunch of pimps and hoes, and then fucking yeah. walk, over, walk across the parking lot and go yeah. to fucking Little D's. It was, it was definitely- uh, a cool like waiting place. You had to sir. stand in like, that square and get yeah, buzzed into the was, bar. Yeah, it was a it was a cool place. Like you know, what I'm saying to like pass time in between time while you're waiting to make a move or waiting to do something. But that shit got bad after a while. Like people were starting to get beat up every night. Like motherfucking police up there a lot now because motherfuckers be tripping in the parking lot. It got it got real ugly. Yeah, hairy a while. for sure. It got ugly after a while, bro. I watched all that shit. Crazy. Yeah. Um. So like obviously when I grew up, man. You mentioned the movie American Pimp when you first got here. You just interviewed mm-hmm. the guy from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, Shout but out like, my boy Gorgeous Dre. I remember watching American Pimp and what was the one that had Mr. White folks in it? Um, there was another pimp documentary that was crazy. Uh, there was like two at the, in the White night. folks was my partner. So, but he was a part. He was in a movie. I knew. I knew him. Um, but but just like the culture of the pimp shit was so mainstream back then. Mm. Like they remember they used to have the. Um, what was the fucking party in Vegas that they would have? Was it pimps and players or... You know what I'm talking about? It wouldn't be in Vegas. No, no, like, no, no, no. It was like a theme night at a nightclub that was like huge. It was not like obvious like... Oh, pimp. I don't know nobody that was playing like that. Um, I wouldn't even pay that. I, I probably don't know because I wouldn't have paid that type of shit no mind. It was before the, I even lived there. Motherfuckers but, theming something, yeah. No. But um, it's crazy because you actually won... You won player of the year, right? Or pimp of the year, was it? I don't recall none of that. You don't recall that? I don't that? remember that, no. 
Fair enough. I don't. I don't remember any of that type of shit. Um, but <clears throat> like for you, like, um, do you feel like in twenty twenty two have has like that hustle had to evolve with like obviously the only fans of the world's coming up or you know some yeah. of the some of the um i guess technology that you know back in the day i guess it was a little different now we're like nowadays women really don't got to leave the crib to to to, to hit a lick uh, that's not necessarily true man cuz you know i mean there's chicks i'm sure eating off only fans but not everybody's eating off only fans you know it sounds easier said than done because you know you got to keep up with content i'm sure on there and not to mention you got to make sure that uh you're bringing something new to the table every time because you know the, the fans that might be spending with you you know they're getting tired of seeing you do the same old okie doke right. trick you know and then like also that trick. shit's on the internet forever it's on there it's, it's on there forever you know the, the, like i said the game that i came from bro it was a secret society like you know a chick could hold for 20 years or you know whatever the case may be and they people would never know, you know, but they're taking care of it on a whole different end because it wasn't something that you had to glorify. You just knew what it was. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now if it's you know, every, you know everything, type shit. Everything need every everybody trying to glorify everything now. Now a label got to stand for everything. And I, to me anymore, man, I say fuck a label. I'm more into the art. And if you think about it too, like labels suck because someone puts a label on you, like, bro, I'm so much more than whatever you it think I am. It boxes you in. It boxes you in as a human being to people's perception. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You seem to have like right away, man, killed it. Like I remember watching the first few episodes of your podcast and I feel like you, you just are a natural at this shit, man. Like and I, I love I think your right. interviews are um they bring something different to like no jumper. Just yeah. podcasting in general. Like I yeah. love I love when you do interviews. I love your approach doing interviews. I love the guests you have. Yeah. You had my homie Kasky on. Yeah, that's my partner. Um you had Yada on, shout out to Yada yeah. from Vegas. Um but uh how hard has it been like I guess adjusting in a new space, man, where you're talking to people, where you're on camera, where you're like your personality, which is something that I'm sure has always been very prevalent in your life, mm. but now the rest of the world knows sharp, knows you for your personality, man. It's uh it's definitely different because, you know, I'm not used to, and I'm not trying to say this in no, like, no funny way or nothing, but, like, I'm not used to working with people, or I'll say people who don't, who haven't done what I've done. Mm -hmm. So it's different dealing with, you know, the square aspect of things, you know, and having to be somewhere on time. You know, hey, you got to do this. I ain't never had nobody tell me to do anything in my motherfucking life only than what I, I want to do. Right. So, you know, just kind of being on just, like, you know, uh, a, a different time zone with it, you know. A little, at, at a little first, bit more structure than you're yeah, used to? Yeah, a little bit more structure than what I'm used to. But then again, you know, I'm used to building structure. So, you know, I got to be able to take what I give, mm -hmm. if that makes any sense. That you makes know? sense. So I came, in, I came in fast and just tried to just, you know what I'm saying, just adapt. Because, mm. you know, I'm a type of person, man, that I've come from many situations and have had to adapt. Mm -hmm. So I feel like this is just one of many that I've had to adapt to. I would like to say that my favorite shit you did was the Tucker the Toe Sucker shit. Yeah, everybody, that everybody like so that. One. Everybody funny. be wanting me to come back and do another one of that one <laughs> with with that guy. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> like, man, do it, do another one. But I'm like, <clears throat> they Bro, were what was... they they listen, man. I think they, that dude's from my hometown too. I'm from Phoenix. I'm pretty sure that's where he's from. Everybody, listen. Everybody always says like, you know, bring back the confrontational ones or do this one or do that one. But I'm like, they were organic when they happened. This ain't no script. I'm yeah, not you can't to run that back, back again with I'm that same energy. Back. Not even that. But like, I'm not trying to come back. Like that shit happened the way that it happened. Like I didn't plan that shit. It wasn't no okay. We're gonna go in here. We're gonna get to bumping heads. No, if a motherfucker say some old weird shit or some off the wall shit, hey, I don't agree with that. I think that I'm. I'm older bro you have to understand something like a lot of these people that and i've said this before on other podcasts like a lot of the people that i interview i'm i'm 12 13 years their senior bro mm -hmm. so it's a huge gap in the mental capacity of what i hold and what they hold they're just now getting around to it bro they are getting their nipples wet Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying? Motherfucker getting hard on like they just getting around to doing something like that. Like I've been around the block, homie, seven, eight, ninety thousand fucking times. So like these are these are kids to me. You know what I'm saying? But we don't we don't hold that respect no more for people that come from, you know, hey man, I've been here before you. I know, you know better. I've seen, yeah, I've seen some I've, things yeah. like they, they don't listen to that. It's all oh, fuck you. You just oh like yo, 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 your mindset or what you got to offer ain't gonna get me nowhere because today knowledge isn't I said it earlier today and it was crazy because I thought about it, I'm like not people don't like knowledge because you can't spend it. 
Mm. It's not. It's not they a tangible currency. It's not tangible currency. They right. can't walk in the mall and spin the knowledge you give them. They're not looking at it that hey, it can look out for you in the long run. Yeah. They're not looking at it like that, man. That's some real shit. You know what I'm saying? They're not looking at it like that. That's why knowledge has been the book. That's the the lowest of the low of value right now on in currency, and it should be the highest. It should be the number one most priceless thing. I think knowledge and time. The, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. but come on, man. Like, even with even with it runs hand in hand. Yeah, for knowledge sure. Knowledge and time, but it's. Like people need to really look at it like that. Knowledge is everything, and what you can take in, what you can, how much of it you can consume, it's priceless. It'll help you in the long run. Hey, what up? It's Boulay Kev. We got to stop the interview to tell you about our good friends at my bookie. Football season has started. My favorite time of the year because I love to gamble on football. It makes watching football so much fun. It's my like literally. I just love watching football, and I love it even more when I got money on the line. And no matter where you are right now. What state, what country, you can get in on the action. It's winning season. Go to my bookie, sign up for a new account, register, and get that double deposit bonus using the promo code bootleg. Now, let me tell you what that means. That means when you go to my bookie, let's say you make a $250 deposit using the promo code bootleg, you'll have $500 to gamble with. That's right. They're going to double your fucking money right now. They got the prop builder you could bet on uh, whether or not, I don't know, Will Matthew Stafford throw for three touchdowns? Will Kyler Murray rush for a touchdown? You can put all those on one thing and secure the motherfucking bag, all right? Get online with your boy. Let's get this money together. My bookie, go sign up with that promo code bootleg and double your deposit right now. Go register. Do you feel like um, you're kind of experiencing, because I feel like you've had some really dope, deep conversations mm. on your podcast that are fucking incredible, but the shit that always goes viral is like, when you get into one of these confrontations right. that goes right. crazy and like, it's like, okay, that shit is cool. And like you said, it was an organic confrontation. Yeah, like, it's not like you're planning that shit to go run back. Right. I don't want to run that back. That's fake to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not how it landed. Everything happened the way that it happened. You got to catch it real life in real time. hundred percent, man. Is there anything like, um, that you feel like you've improved upon since you started the podcast? Like, just in terms of like, I've, I've, I think I've improved a lot. Like, in you know, just trying to take my time more with mm -hmm. things. But you know, I feel like people only critique themselves to the viewer. But you're still watching. You you should want this to be organic. You should not want this to be because your comments change the narrative now, mm. and it's what it is. Now that done got watered down. That means everybody can fucking do it, right? And not everybody can do it. So sit the fuck back. Let me grab the steering wheel. Let me drive. Don't try to put your hand on it. You're turning right. I'm turning left. We're bound to fucking crash. Don't do me. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Let us take the steering wheel. Let us do what we're doing. That's what makes it captivating. Real conversation, and I've said it before, well, overall, real people. And like, I think people obviously gravitate to you because shit. Those are some of the highest uh, view counts on uh, Soft White Underbelly are your interviews. Some like People them, obviously yeah. really gravitate to you because I think you're pretty unapologetically authentic. I mean, I'll say this. I feel like there's some people that probably whooped me, but they were on some weird shit. Like it was some, it wasn't like, hey, if people man, hate you, they're going to watch you as yeah, well. Like, yeah, people hate you because they want to have something to talk about. Like, I like to go back to like some of my interviews. I've done, even though I got a lot of them that's done numbers, gold, but some of the ones that I really was like, this was a good one right here was, it was, it had information, it had knowledge, it was showing you where this person's been, where they're where they're at today and where they're headed. It's It's got all of the, the missing pieces of the puzzle to become a masterpiece, you know, a one of one. And a lot of people won't, they won't watch that one as much as they'll watch the confrontational one because they like drama. They like confrontation. They don't want to learn anything. That's why I told you knowledge is at an all-time low. You should be wanting to take this shit and run with this and shit. And apply it to your if life. If somebody's yeah. trying to give it up to you, take that shit, man, because ain't shit for free in this world but an asshole. And I said before, man, sometimes you can't even get that for free. Ain't that the truth? For real. What's a couple of the interviews that you wish more people would have watched? Mm. But you're like, man, this There's one a, was special. Like, I really wish this would have went crazier for the right reasons. There was a there was a couple, man. You know, um, one of the first ones that I did that didn't have any confrontation, my boy Cookie Man. 
uh, Tookie Blunt, he owns a dispensary out in the Bay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he went through hell, man. Business partners robbing him like he teared up, like he was sad because he really trusted these people. Right, right, you know right. what I'm saying? And they have to bounce back by himself. Right. And really, like, try to bring it to the forefront to where he's sitting there now telling his story. Like, it was it was definitely captivating. It was, I, I feel like this, man. Like, there's a lot of them that just need to be watched. Like, don't just look for the controversy. Come and get the knowledge, too. Because mm. to me, there's countless ones I feel like I've done that they deserved more. That's fair. You know what I'm saying? They deserved more, man. But hey, who am I? I that would make me, I, I can't critique that because that would turn me to a viewer. And I just want them to do what they do organically. But just don't just always look for the drama. Look for some knowledge, too, and something you can gain. Because that time that you sat there and even just watched that bullshit or somebody get into it, you could have spent learning something as well. Mm. That's real. You don't get your time back. I don't care if you also, spend I do, I also, 20 motherfucking minutes. I also feel like even when you're getting in it, into it with people, it's almost from like a place of like frustration where it's like, yo, are you fucking no, kidding me? No, a like, place of passion. Right, 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 because right. Because in all, in all in all, I give a fuck about people, bro. And you know, sometimes you got to give people tough love. You got to tell them what they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Everybody's been cushioned by that, man. Mm. We've cushioned ourselves with that here in America, bro. And we got to stop doing that to each other. We got to stop lying to each other and overall to ourselves. I feel you on that, if man. If we don't make, come on, bro. When do we when do we break that cycle? It seems like it's getting softer. Mm -hmm. It's not getting any stronger. Uh, let's switch it up. Okay, you're a Vegas guy. All-time great. Give me your top four Vegas strip clubs of all time. Open, closed. I'll throw one out first. Let's go with Strip Hop. That Strip Hop era was special. At Seamless. It was at, like, was it? Seamless. Right there off of Arville. Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. remember it. Everybody used to slide through that motherfucker. Mm -hmm. well, Franny was DJing. And, uh, I remember that motherfucker. Yeah. It was cool. Rick Ross and them used to slide yeah, through there. Yeah. They used to pop. I remember that joint. Um, Palomino's a classic. Palomino's a classic in the north. It's out north. It's yeah. right there next to a little small spot named Chica's Bonitas. Oh, yeah. That sits right next to it, I believe. A little small hole Spearman in the Spearman Rhino's probably like the... Spearman Rhino's. Spearman Rhino Good is, wings. is cool. That's yeah, like the tourist cool. spot. You know, um, I, used to always, I always used to love me some Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse back the in the day? One. Or the, the new one? one. The, the new one, one. Yeah. yeah. The new one's Not actually one got good sushi. the one that was on Industrial. The new one's got good sushi. And that went on industrial for years. Was that the one under the bridge? Yeah, under the bridge. And they tried to reopen right it and then it went industrial. Yeah, and then something fucking happened and they yeah. they were weighed with it. What else? Um, Hustler's cool, I guess. Hustler's solid. Around. They're solid. They're all right. That's I like the little that. rooftop shit. That the shit rooftop was, cool. was a vibe when they first <laughs> opened and they were throwing parties <laughs> yeah. and shit. I think Baby Bash cool. hosted some shit up there. Yeah, that's the just cool. The rooftop was a vibe. Yeah. 100%. Did you ever, um, obviously, you know, I think Molly Mall's locked up right now, but were you ever close with Maul or did you ever go to any of his parties back no. in the day? No. 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 Yeah, I know he had some crazy parties. No, never did. You don't know say? I never did. I'll tell you the truth. Fair Honestly, enough. I didn't. Like, you can't say I know, he knows me. I know him. I don't know him. That's fair. We know, I, I know of him. I've heard of his name, but I've never, I don't know. Um, talk to me about what's like, in your opinion, like, you see kind of like, what AD's done with the community and, and, and kind of spinning off No Jumper. Is there anything else that you're like currently working on that yeah, like got some stuff going, but I just wanna I just wanna bring it out. I don't wanna talk about it no more. I just wanna bring it's just it gonna out. Happen. Some, it's just gonna happen. I got some big I got some big plays coming though. I feel like you could write a book, man. Yeah, I think so. I think so. I probably could. Yeah. I probably could. What should we what should we call it? I don't know. Or like a Netflix series about like, your okay, life. Okay, so I'm gonna say this, right? So if I uh if like from all that you've heard so far, right? Like if you were sitting here and like you were a dude that like signs off on the books, like yeah, this needs to be a book. From what you've heard so far, what would you like? What title would you lean towards? Oh, what title? <laughs> Pip Pippin ain't easy. <laughs> That's too easy. That's too easy. It's the first thing that popped up. That's my head. too easy. I would. You know what I would probably call it? What? <laughs> I would call it from from pimping to potting. From pimping to potting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. In a Barnes and Noble near you. From here. pimping <laughs> to potting. That's fucking great. Yeah, show up to my book signing, bitch. Hey, for for uh <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah. Not saying you in particular, but for like in general. 
based on your experience, I think that like uh, the the term pimping has got a uh, a bad stigma to it, obviously. But like, yeah, man. I do feel like what you said earlier about structure. You're like, yo, I, I created structure, so it, I I can take it how I give it. Um, would you say that that is the main purpose of somebody who holds that title? Not saying yourself. I just mean in general. Someone who, run that back to me again. So the purpose of a pimp, mm. you know, in a girl's life, who is why under, are you so curious about that? Because I'm just curious. Like, if it, I'm not saying you, I mean in general, would you say the main purpose of that would be structure? Structure, you know, and I'll say this, man. For what I've always seen the game as, and especially sitting back now and looking in on it, it's I feel like. It's just coming together with somebody that really understands what you're doing because I like I've said before, and I'll give I'll use you as an example. You work a regular ninety five, right? Let's nah. just say you work let's yeah. just say yeah. you yeah. Did, okay, okay, fair right? enough. Yeah. You just they say you work a regular ninety five or whatever. Fair enough. And you come home and you know you want a hot meal, maybe lay down with your chick, you know, watch some Netflix or something, get rubbed on, do what you do, you know, right. get get up and get ready to do your thing again in the morning. Correct. Could you accept when you come in and, you know, you come in from a long day of work, you get in the shower, she's getting out the shower to get ready to go to work to go and fuck with some tricks. Could you accept that? Could I? Could if I was working that? a nine to five? Yeah, and... could you accept that? Just you're coming home every day and that's what she's doing. Uh, it would depend on how I met the young You're in lady. love with her. Oh, man, come on. I'm, I'm in love with her? You're in love with her. You're in a whole situation. You're in a whole relationship with her. If I was just a normal dude, normal Joe Schmo, probably not. I don't know. I don't. You have to think about what I'm saying here, okay? Do I think I would give a fuck? Yes, I would give a fuck. Would you if I'm give a, no a fuck? Yes, You're I'm in not. A relationship. Yes, with her. yes. I meant. Would you I meant. Give a fuck I would probably not be okay with it. You knew she was turning tricks. Yes, yes. I mean, would you be okay with it? Her leaving every night. And you don't know what she's doing. You just know she's getting some money. She ain't. If I was a Joe nothing. Schmo, keep... I would say yeah. I would probably be like, what the fuck's going on here? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yes. How many? You have to think about it. That's even though, okay, you're a rare one of one, obviously. <laughs> My bad. But you have to think about how many other people. No, 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 no. I'm telling you that if I was people, just a normal guy, I would give a fuck. I'd be like, what the fuck gonna, are you doing? And that's yes. my point. Like, a motherfucker's going to give a fuck. So there's a lot of chicks that aren't going to stop doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they still want to, they're a woman. They still want affection. They still yearn a for partner. that. partner. They still yearn for that. Nobody wants to be alone. The biggest, baddest motherfucker that'll sit there and say, oh, I'm, I'm independent. I'm about, just want somebody. Mm -hmm. You have a fuck if it's a fucking a cat, mm -hmm. a dog. Like, the motherfucker's going to want something. As some, some sort of affection. Of some sort of, yeah, for sure. Friendship, something. Some type of a situationship, relationship. Doesn't matter. They're going to want it. Because in this, in this world, nobody's built to be alone. Mm. That's, That's how real. I feel. Nobody's That's built fair. to be alone. That's you know fair. And I think everybody knows that deep down inside, they just can't find the fucking words. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it really it stems to, to me. Everybody wa and everybody wants to be wanted, not needed. So not you're used, saying essentially, essentially, companionship, but it's also I mean, obviously a, bu a business the, relationship. I mean, when you're in that, wouldn't you want some type of compensation? Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, damn. Like, if I'm going to put up Wouldn't with all you, these guys running through you, you I'm going to need a little something. compensation, what you going to sit there and say and do? Yeah. Like I said, either, either here or there, it, that shit, it isn't for everybody. That's fair. And it seems like it's been a, it's a, it's a dying game, man. It's a dying breed. You got to pick something else up. These yeah. Days. Well, like you nowadays, to. you got like, uh, you, you know. You got to. You got like guys like uh, Tyga, like launching like OnlyFans agencies, like. I mean, shit, Adam manages girls on OnlyFans. You know, shout out to him. Getting get, get to it. Amen. The porn man. Um, have you, like, there's so many different inner workings within the No Jumper universe between, like, uh, just politics or certain people don't fuck with. It, it just, it seems like a lot between the Flacco guy. Or there's, like, you know, there's just so many different personalities, I'll right? I'll say this. I, I see where you're going with it. No, bro, I got, listen. Everybody got love for each other. There ain't no problem. Well, no, but I wasn't even going to say that. No I was going to ask you, like, is it, is it, is it, if, is, is it like a more of a big family or does everybody just kind of do it's their a thing? Family, we all together. Even though we got to do what we got to do separately, that's what makes us a team. So, you know, it's been all gravy train over there. 
100%. Everybody, man. yeah, everybody focused. Everybody's buckling down. I don't think Adam would have invested into even having a new office. The new building looks crazy. If, if, and I don't think he would have put that together if everybody was on rocky terms or everybody's just kind of doing their own thing. No, it's about bringing ideas together and how can we make this bigger? Mm. That's fair, man. You know what I'm saying? How can we make this bigger? But, you know, we ain't just trying to bring on no suckers. So everybody stop trying to DM, trying to, hey, man, we got to start now, nah, man. Come on, man. If it's going to happen for you, let it happen organically. Also, like I feel like everything, like you said, it's got to be organic. It's got to be, man. Like you like came in for an interview and then from there it was like, damn. And that's documented. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers don't know. Go watch it. You'll 100%. See. You'll see. For sure. If you had to pick an actor to play you in a Netflix miniseries about your life, who would it be, man? Mm. Who's playing sharp? Who would play me? Let me see. Mm. That'd be a light skinned cat. Some light skinned, obviously. Who could I have? I ain't picking no damn Terrence Howard neither. That ain't even that ain't even one. I want something different. Terrence Howard? Shout out to Terrence. I could, yeah, shout out to him, but I just couldn't. No, I'm saying, because I'm thinking light skinned, like I'm trying to keep within my realm. But mm, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Because I, 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 to be honest with you, I'm a hard act to follow. Okay. You dig what I'm saying? So I don't really think anybody can uh, two play. They would have to pick that, and hopefully he can he can nail it. Mm. I mean, just to be real, me thinking about it, it's not coming to my mind because it's not fucking supposed to. Right. That's how I really feel about it. You know what I'm saying? That's not supposed to. I feel like you put a lot of game out into the world. When's the last time somebody really gave you some game or some advice that you really held on to? I try to take some, hopefully, I want to say every day, because anybody that I talk to, I want to be able to gain something from that conversation, even in this conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? I want to be able to leave with something, and I'll sort through it to get mine's. You ain't got to just give it to me as a, as a course. Here's this course, that course. No, however you run it, I'll sort through the laundry. I'll find my size. So you're just always, you're just, I mean, I feel I'm like. always soaking up game, bro. As you should, man. You know what I'm saying? Always, man. I don't never stop, man. That means I stop living if I'm doing that. How did you get the name Sharp, man? Uh, From one of my partners, man, from Dago, man. Uh, Shout out Juice Jones. That's my partner, man. I got that name in Chicago. I went when I was probably 17. That was one of my first cross-country endeavors. And I went cross-country, and I was out there in Chicago for like two and a half months, three months trapping. And, you know, I was always a sharp dude. I always dressed sharp. So my partner was just like, man, you sharp, man. You just, you always dress sharp. And it just, it stuck with me. And it just, it ran with me for years. Chicago, man. Chicago mm -hmm. for a few months at yeah. 17? Yeah. Damn. Mm -hmm. How was that? that? Was cool. It was cool, man. Just doing what I knew. Yeah. Yeah. Doing what I knew, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, it was cool. What was it like? Because uh, San Diego is a pretty... A, a, a beautiful place, but mm -hmm. also, like, I don't think people understand, like, things can get hairy in San Diego. Oh, for sure. Obviously, uh, for sure, for sure. San Diego's a real place. <clears throat> for sure. Um, what would you say, like, the contrast going back and forth from Diego to Vegas was, like, how how, how do the cities, how, I guess, how, how's the streets different? Well, I feel like it's it's no different, man. It's just different views. It's just different. One's, one's in the desert and one's by the beach. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Buy some water. Like it doesn't it doesn't change. Like there's no uh difference in the type of motherfuckers that run around. You know right. what I'm saying? It's just different it's just different places, man. Yeah. That's the problem. Motherfuckers always want to like section off motherfuckers in this section and that section. But really motherfuckers is just the same. They just, just live in different, different areas. Areas. Just different areas, yeah. man. It's the West Coast. I think everybody motherfucker living damn near the same. You know what I'm saying? Paying rent the same. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Paying their light bills the same. Trying to, you know what I'm saying, bag bitches the same. Like, motherfuckers ain't, <clears throat> there ain't nothing new. I ain't seen nothing new that motherfuckers is doing in different places down here that is just like a one-off. Like, wow, hold on, we ain't seen that yet. They they doing that. No, man, everybody doing, man, doing what they do. Yeah, everywhere, has its, own, everywhere has its own politics. Everyone's got That's why own. I don't ever really look at it as like too much yeah. segregation, man. Like, because in, in all in all, we, we all the same, bro. <laughs> Mm -hmm. At the end of it all, I mean, that's the problem. That's where we get it fucked up. Everybody, like I said, want to separate shit or, oh, well, what do you think these people are thinking about these people over here, man? The same motherfucking thing. Mm -hmm. You ever notice? You plotting on me, I'm plotting on you. Like, it's the same motherfucking shit, bro. It doesn't change. So where were you like- Ham and Swiss. Your high school years, where were they predominantly in? I didn't go to high school. At I all. I got kicked out in ninth grade. So ninth grade, you were 
freshman grade, year, you were was, out of there. I was gone, bro. Where were you at when that happened? Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. What high school were you supposed to go to in Vegas? Clark. Shout out to Clark. Went there fucking like three, four months. Crazy. Three months. What'd you get kicked out for? Knowing somebody had a pistol in school or something. But I already had the rap sheet hella big. So just that just threw the icing on the cake. And they so you had already that. gotten into trouble yeah. a lot in school. Yeah, I got in trouble a lot in school, man. So, so it was just like, that was, even though I didn't even have nothing to do with the shit. Like, I don't know nothing about nothing. Like, but just because they just hear my name floating around some shit. They call me into like the little school police, call me in the office, start asking me a whole bunch of questions, whatever. I'm like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. But just because it hit the desk wrong, bro, they sent me up to opportunity school. And then I got kicked out of opportunity school. And then I went to court continuation. And from court continuation, I just never made it back through it, bro. I got too old to go. So would you say that like despite I start getting a GED? Despite being in trouble a lot, would you say you were a good student or like how, what kind of student were I you? I probably could have been a better one, but I feel like teachers ain't as hands on. It's more of, it was more of to me like a paycheck. Like instead of seeing like, man, maybe this kid could be something special, they just. They're showing for up a for certain, the paycheck and they're underpaid they, anyway. A lot, they, uh, I feel like a lot, there's only a couple in the school, I feel like right. in every school that, give that a like fuck. really give a fuck. Right. Like, yeah, the checks, it's all right, whatever, but I care about these kids. These kids have grown on me, man. You don't. You don't have a you lot You don't of see that. that, especially, I feel like nowadays is worse. It's way worse. Yeah, because like with the uh, inflation, teachers really don't make shit, because their pay ain't gone up. So it's like, no. they're still making that bullshit money. It's bad, bro. It's bad. Bro. It's bad. It's crazy. At what point in time did you first like start getting familiar with the street shit? Like, was like, at what age? Like 13. 13, so that's Four, like- At least, because that's when I start like getting hungry, like and wanting things. I'm like- Shit, I can't really eat like this or do something like this. So I gotta get on the streets and I gotta make it happen, bro. I gotta, I gotta make something. I gotta do something. Right. Try, man, man, young, trying to sell crack for a short amount of time. That shit died out quick because, like, that was the ending era. The ending of the I wasn't crack era, no yeah. 80s. I wasn't in the '80s right, 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 right. when it was popping. So you know, I'm shit early, early 2000s, just catching some stragglers. Like it wasn't really something super crazy. You know I feel what like what was what, what was after that? I feel like in Vegas bitches was were, bitches were good. Listen to me, bro. I always been good with bitches, and when I saw like you know, just even just having them just mm -hmm. around, like. Just always having, like, you know what I'm saying? So I just start, like, kind of pressing, like, hey, let's do this. Or, you know what I'm saying? You want to get on it? And a lot of bitches already be down. They already was ready to ride. That's crazy. Like, and then from on, there, bro. it was like, I found my my niche. I found. Like yeah. I, I felt like it. You know, I felt like it was something I could do. Oh, can I do this forever? But then I start getting older, bro, and just. You grow, man. I, like, you know, I just start getting older, man, and just start like, fuck, man. I know I got to come up with some type of game plan, and this ain't even fucking like a podcast or nothing. Like, I don't give a fuck if it's just owning a business, owning something. Anything. You know what I'm saying? Doing anything. I don't give a fuck. Podcasting was the last motherfucking thing on the list. It was just so fell in your lap, man, and you're so great at it, man. I, I just, uh, I touched the microphone, and I ain't left yet. Mm. Did you ever try? Did you ever rap? For a little bit. But okay. I did it because it was like a release. Like, I liked it because it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I can go talk my shit on it. But, like, I never really. I feel like you'd be it, like it a cool. natural dope rapper. It, like. it was it was cool, man. But, you know, trying to do it within a group, you know, and just with people or things like You're that. You've always been a good team player. You know what I'm saying? Like, always been like, yeah, just with some of my people. Right, right, right. And just always been a good team player. But, you know, motherfuckers don't always play like that. So, you know, things always, you know, break up. And I was just like, man, I just, I think it kind of beat me out of it. Like, I was like. I How tried many a years were bit. you trying? Probably like three. Three years? Shit. Yeah, like I three. Mean, not, wait, wait, yeah. In I Vegas? Mean, yeah. That Vegas rap scene is lit, bro. I it's love cool. it out there. No, it's cool. I, I can, like the, the Ahab it's, battles it's cool, and all that I shit. I just feel like it gets robbed of its shine, too, right. though. A lot of cities do, but if we're going to talk about Vegas, I feel like Vegas, it gets robbed of it. I mean, everybody that is from there that, that raps that even knows of me knows I'm telling the truth. They get robbed of it. They don't get the same type of opportunities to go shut shit down, like getting calls like, hey, we're taking nine of y'all, ten of y'all a month. Let's right. get across the country. Ain't nobody getting them fucking phone calls like that. That's really And everything that they probably getting is is, get, is coming from out of town. And then the Just shit, even the, the shit you were saying, like, people don't know, like, Neo's from Vegas. I think yeah. he went to Rancho. Yeah, he like, went to Rancho. And, like, I'm like, yo, yeah. you would never know that because Neo don't really rep Vegas. Like, you no. would, you know what I mean? But like, it was on his ID one time when he got pulled over in a little prank, like little shit, and right? they pulled out his ID and it says, why does it say North Las Vegas? But he was claiming LA. Yeah. He was like, oh, I went to school there. Like nobody, nobody really, I don't know. I just don't get that part of it, bro. Like 
you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I got love for Mandago and Vegas. Like, but if you could show some love, man, like, don't show some love. Let them know where you're from, man. Let them know where, where your background come from. But everybody always try to hide it like they're hiding something. Especially, I, don't, yeah. I don't get that part. Like, you could tell your story. Like, why why hide something? If you want to be from L.A., hey, all right, go ahead and say that. Hey, I'm from here, but by way of here. Do whatever you do, but just yeah. keep that shit a band. 100%, man. Keep that shit 100. So you said that uh, in, like, high school you had kind of figured out that there, there was a pathway to kind of get the money that you were seeking yeah. through your natural Hell talents yeah. with women. Hell yeah. At what age would you say you... Had your first, you know, situation where there was a nice business situation going based on those talents. Like it really struck good for me, like fifteen. Wow, fourteen at fifteen. This is just one or multiple. Just one at the time. I mean, shit. I didn't really. I don't even think I was ready for multiple. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm trying to get my feet wet. I'm trying to figure it out myself. Like, is this even something that's going to even work for me? Shit. You know what I mean? Right. I'm just trying it because I'm like, well, shit. It's already there. I done tried everything else. I didn't try. You know what I'm saying? That's not working. Right. Let me try something. Let me try something else. And voila. Appreciate y'all watching. But listen, our partners at Blue Chew, they got you handled, fellas and etcs. Whatever you are, they got it. If you got a dick, Blue Chew is for you because they will make sure your dick performs at all-time levels. I mean, like, LeBron, his first three seasons with the Heat-type levels. I mean, your wife will thank you for it. Everybody will thank you for it. Shit, even if you just take a Blue Chew and jerk your dick, it's a, it's a stronger jerk. I swear to God, stronger cock jerk for sure. You're going to be beating your dick like it stole something. So what you got to do is go to BlueChew.com right now. Use the promo code BOOTLEG right now, and you're going to get your first month free. And this is the great thing about Blue Chew. The same active ingredients as Viagra and as Cialis, but uh, you don't got to go to the doctor's office. Yeah, who wants to go hang out at the doctor's office and be like, hey, doc, you got some cock pills for me? Nobody wants to do that. No, you sign up at Blue Chew, use the promo code BOOTLEG, and you're getting your first month delivered to your door in discreet packaging. I'm telling you. You're going to thank me later, all right? If you've gotten Blue Chew already, just DM me. Tell me, just just DM me. No photos. Just tell me how, you know. Let me just tell you, it's fucking amazing. Our producer, Cyrus's dad, he's 70, took the Blue Chew. He's fucking just beating down all the senior citizen pussy available in Arizona right now. So go to bluechew.com, use that promo code bootleg, or just hit the link in the description of this video. Let's get back to the interview. Now that um, you're kind of like, gathering like national fame like i just saw andrew uh andrew Scholes was talking about you on yeah. uh on on one of his podcasts and i know he went dope. and Scholes is fucking dope. dope but um now that you're kind of like getting this newfound fame like uh is it like weird or is it something that you feel like you're kind of built for because i feel I like still, now you probably get recognized you go to the yeah. mall for like shit that like for just doing a podcast like is it is it kind of crazy to adjust to that Man, I got stopped. I was driving in last night, right? It's funny. Yeah. But I was driving in last night and I stopped uh like at the end of Barstow real quick. And I was just, I was running in to use the bathroom and just top off some gas real quick before you get in LA before it get too expensive, mm -hmm. you know? And I go in the store and this dude, man, sharp from motherfucking, it was the clerk, sharp from motherfucking sharp tag. Like, bro, I don't mean to That's bother crazy. you. Can I get a picture with you real quick? I'm on the phone, bro. I'm trying to just get my gas and get mm -hmm. moving. I'm like, damn, is that the payment for gas? Like, Yeah, it's like, do like, I have to nah, still I give you my card? A, he was like, I got to get a picture first. Wow. I was like, all right, bro, you know, it's cool. But I like, I don't, uh, I don't, like, I don't look at myself like that, bro. I'm just for the people. Like, I just fuck with the people. If you fuck with me, I'm fucking with you. You know, you want to build on something, you come up talking the right shit, hey, let's build. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's about, connecting. Yeah. Connection. It's just got to be weird. Like, I feel like you, you sh your fame, obviously, the YouTube interviews were big, but then this podcast, I feel like the shit is just, man, I feel like it, it's- It's definitely- uh, It's a quick it's session. It's different, bro. Yeah. Like I said, and just going back to what I was saying earlier, just working with people that I've never, I probably would have never in a million years worked with if I was just staying in that lane. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I would have never probably ran across them. Hell, I never watched any, I never watched anything like that. Like I just, you know what I'm saying? I did my own thing, man. I never- Right. Has there been a, a celebrity or somebody who you admired that like you found out was like fucking with the podcast that you kind of were like, oh shit. Like I just mentioned Andrew uh, Scholes as a fan. Like anybody like that? Yeah. Uh Macklemore. Shout out to Macklemore, man. Yeah, bro. That's that's my homie right there. He's How'd cool. you find out he fucked with you? One of my people told me, like, hey, you know, Macklemore follows you. I said, no, nah, I don't. You know what I'm saying? Football players, bro, fucking rappers. 
They I, fuck with me, and I fuck with them. Shit. Macklemore is pretty crazy. Shout Macklemore, out to Seattle. Man, I fuck with him, bro. Yeah. Y'all fuck chop it him. up? Huh? Yeah, yeah chopped yeah. it up with him. That's dope. DMs, yeah, he's cool. Who's your football team, bro? Why are you worried about that? Because you're trying to get it. Yeah, you're trying to have Well, them, you're for, like, listen. Well, I'll tell, well, there's I'll the, the Chargers. Up, there's the, there well, was, not even that, bro, because I grew up. I'm from the old school. I grew up as a Cowboys fan, I was going to say, if I had to put money Troy on Aikman the Cowboys. Days, though, okay. But Troy Aikman days, though, when they was really playing football, bro, not yeah. this shit that's going on. Y'all need to get y'all weather together. How you feeling about the Cowboys, man? It's been a while. It's been a, been a long time, man. I don't think they're building around Dak the right way. I just think I don't think so, bro. Mike, they're not Mike McCarthy the right is a terrible coach. They're like, not, but, but I'm feeling like this. They're not putting the right pieces around him. I mean, they got CeeDee Lamb. They got Michael Gallup. They got yeah, still developing. No offense to them. Right, right, right. Still right. in development. Right. Not saying they can't be and nothing. Amari Cooper. But right now, but right now, still kind of in development. These are going to be stars here shortly in the future. But right, right, they don't now, have like Jamar are, are Chase. We, are we talking about a championship here? Right, no, you're right, you're right. This you're upcoming right. year, are we talking about one in the next four right, years? Because right, right. I need to know the difference, you know what I'm saying? So that way, then we can start counting some people. No, that's fair. But I feel like some people need to really develop, and I'm sure there's other things going on like that all They probably shouldn't league. have paid Zeke that bag, because who pays running backs like that? You know, you know I mean? I was the Pollard the, dude's uh, a beast. I was watching the, uh, the Hard Knocks. Shit, shout out to Hard Knocks. Too. Which one, on the, the Lions one? I was watching, listen. Yeah. So, and this is no offense to the Lions or anybody, but just watching what some of these teams go through that still stay low ranking. Y'all go through hell in a cell with an 83 man, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 83 man that y'all start off with and y'all got to keep 52 or some shit I like think it's that. 52 or 53, 52. yeah. 52, so there's people that you got to cut. You go through all this hell to still have a fucked up year. The worst. It's crazy to me. I was like, damn, I never thought. I was like, damn, there, there is a but lot. But the money's not terrible. It. The money's not terrible. You know, I heard, uh, what was that? They say uh, for like even the practice team, if you like still make the practice team, but not being on it's the field. Something. It's like 10 bands a week. Yeah, you'll take that all 10 day. 10 bands a week for Put like me on the, the season. That's What's amazing. What's the season last? Like, so let's see, September to February. So if you if you make the Super Bowl, you're there till February. So probably yeah. September to January. Yeah, Seven, at ten bands 18, a week. It's eighteen weeks. At ten bands, a, weeks. at ten yeah. bands a week, real quick, and you're not even playing. It's one hundred and eighty bands just to chill. Shit, work a couple days a week. Don't need to pick up a player. Let me know, man. I'll throw <laughs> some cleats on. You could be like, you could just be the start, the starters, like you know, the guy the starters beat up on and make ten yeah. bands in a week. What? Yeah, forty k a month. To just be okay at football? For real. 10K that's just crazy. for the practice team. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess they keep a practice team around or whatever. Have fuck. you seen the uh, – have you, like, gone to a Raiders game yet? Mm -mm. I'm going to uh, the Raiders Cardinals game in a I couple like weeks. I like the UFC shit. Oh, the UFC shit is crazy out I there. I went to uh, – actually, me and – well, No Jumper, myself, everybody, you know what I'm saying, like all the hosts, we right. went to um, to the Masvidal and Kobe Covington fight in Vegas. That was pretty cool at Floor Seats. What, how would you compare the UFC shit to the boxing shit in Vegas? Because they're both their own thing. I don't know. Because the boxing shit, like, I went to a Pacquiao fight in, like, 2010 or 11. That was fucking insane. Like, I think the hardest, I think one of the hardest, who I watch the most, like, honestly. Like, I feel like he is the future coming up behind Floyd is Javante Davis. Right. To me. I know people might have their opinions. And right, right, right. That's fair. Him, Devin Haney, them guys are the ones coming up. Uh, to Fimo, hopefully, man, he can get uh, get his shit together. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? But like, them supposed to be the faces of boxing. I mean, I believe they they face bring them out. Is the is the environment different though from a UFC fight to going to a boxing fight in Vegas? Say you that say? Again. Is it a different feel, a different environment? Oh, most definitely because. It, like you see the punches, like that's cool with the uh, with boxing, and I love boxing. I grew up on boxing, right. watching Mike Tyson, of Lennox course, Lewis, of all course. that. But like with <clears throat> UFC, like when you're there and you see you hear a motherfucker like get slammed, it like echoes through the shit. Like you just hear doof. It's just a just lot more going, blood. Everybody start going crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That shit crazy. The it's UFC dope. shit live is like uh It's dope. It feels like you know when you when you we think about like people who used to go to the Roman Coliseum back in the day and watch yeah. people just like brawl. Yeah. <laughs> Nate it, Diaz, come get the interview, boy. I'm waiting on you. St All y'all Stockton's UFC, finest. Man. Come on, bro. Hey, come get it with a real one, bro. Real to recognize real. Come on and come get it. Have you reached out to Nate Diaz outside of right uh, now? I'd I be think a crazy I talked one. to I think I talked to my publicist, I talked to her about getting to it, but I think I even DM'd him just on some shit like, man, hey, whoop that, whoop that boy ass. Yeah. Just on some regular shit. I couldn't help myself. Is that like a, who, who, who are like myself. three or four people who, you know, 
you would just love to interview, whether it's a Nate Diaz or just somebody like that that you're just a fan of. That you're like, man, I would just Nate love Diaz. It. I'd like to get him up in there. Kevin Gates, I'd like to get him up in there because I always know he got some wild shit to say. Super wild. We just, Andrew Tate, yeah. come on and come run it. Okay. Me and you, we, we got to run one up. YouTube interview might get pulled down. <laughs> it, it might get pulled, but you know what? I know how to navigate the conversation, so I think that we might be able to do good and just do the numbers, even though I know it's going to be peaking the fucking of ceiling. Course. It's going to be oozing. You might have to go to Romania but, for that. But, you know, none the, hey, man. I'm it might be worth it. It might be fucking worth it. It would be worth it, honestly. It would be. You yeah. know I'm making the move, bro. Yeah, you got to make that wherever, move. Hey, wherever, hey, wherever it takes me, me and my Spanish guitar. What were you I'm thinking, like, way. when you... <laughs> when you saw him get banned off the internet, like yeah. what, what were your thoughts on that? That's just, you know, you and I both know, okay, when it comes to radio, when it comes to social content. media, when it comes to any kind of content, there's always a cap of what they feel you can say so you don't disturb society. Right. That's pretty much what it is. And they they capped him. That's what I look at it as. He he tried to see how deep the rabbit hole goes and it started hitting rock. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Like, no, for and sure. And I'm not mad at him because I'll say this. Like, you know, you want to be open? Hey, be open. Mm -hmm. Do your thing, brother. I ain't got nothing against that. But that's what they're going to do to you. They're going to try to cap you, man. There's too many people that run that shit on the other side that's just, you're, you're outnumbered. Right. You're, it's just a slippery slope when you start banning people because it's like, okay, so now that it's a precedent that people can just be deleted off the internet. Yeah, it's like, just like that. And like, especially I. Especially if you're eating like that. Yeah. First of all, he was eating crazy. But also, yeah. like, I would say, like, 90% of what Andrew Tate was saying was probably, like, I wouldn't say rat. I mean, like, I could understand, like, yeah, yeah. He's just yeah. said his delivery might be, you know, but whatever. I get it. He's, yeah. he's you know, I would say the other 10% might be a little problematic if, like, 12-year-old kids are watching it on TikTok. But at the yeah. same time, it's no different than when you and I were growing up and fucking Eminem came out talking about raping his mom. We didn't go fucking rape our mom. You know what I'm right, saying? Like, right, 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 right. It's like at the end of the day, because I, I think that's what really probably the biggest concern was like, well, his main audience are kids, and we don't want kids growing up being yeah, misogynistic. They they, yeah, they don't, but... But it's but like if you're doing your job as parents. Because I feel like there's a, and I'm not going to speak on what, but I feel like there's a lot of other things that they let just naturally, organically be, be some encouragement. And they don't mind that. And I don't want to speak on things because I don't want to get Tons of politics. stuff, whether it's music, it's whether that, it's in, yeah, no, no, it's you're right. It's just a lot of stuff that they say, hey, let them have a choice. So like, come on, man. Like, open, if you're going to open it up, open it up. Yeah, I just think you know, that, if you're gonna open up the fucking door, don't crack it. Right, open right, the right, door. Right, 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 right. Don't try to find things that okay, this this passes. Oh, okay, and this passes. No, you don't. You stand over here to the side of the line. We'll talk to you in a second. All right, this one passes. Y'all three go over to this side. Like, come on, man. It's like, like this gonna, wild and crazy shit. If, if you're gonna, that's being marketing to kids is okay. It's okay. But this shit. Y'all got to, it's, oh, it might just disturb these kids. It might give them the fa uh, a false sense of something they don't need to be believing mm -hmm. in or looking at. But, like, come on, man. Who's controlling this? Like, who's controlling these narratives? Like, who's making right. up these shitty-ass fucking rules of what they feel like society it's should these, stand It's for? really all the tech companies, man. And it's, like, crazy because, like you said, it's, Who like. Who controls the tech companies? I don't know. Mark Zuckerberg. Right. Oh, you don't want to talk about it? Come on. Mark Google Zuckerberg. Yeah. I don't Ooh. fucking know. Mark nah, Zuckerberg. Yeah. Got him. Yeah. What's the other guy uh, who runs yeah, Google? You're right. I think it's the Asian you're guy. Fuck. I'm, you know where I'm going with it. It ain't just him. Joe, Look at him, bro. You think Joe Byron? El Presidente I don't, I don't Joe? Know, Sleepy bro. Joe? I don't fucking know. Who. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who, man. Uh, like I said, I just know that, like, if you're going to, long story short, and keep it for what it is, if you're going to crack the door, Open it up. Yeah, like to me, Don't. to me, it's a slippery slope when you make a bunch of this shit okay, whatever this. It's one of your shit favorite is. words, huh? Slippery slope. You've used that a few times now. So if all this is okay, right? Yeah. But then this little like that isn't even necessarily maybe as outrageous as some of the stuff yeah. over here. Yeah, yeah. They, but you know, like I said, his his rules people make up, man. Are you worried rules about that? Made. Like, are you worried like um? You know, like when you when you when you when you do certain content, like yeah, you know, uh, does it ever cross your mind when you see something like what happens to Andrew Tate? Like, oh, maybe I got to tone it down a little. Maybe I got to. I mean, I feel like mine's more of a figure of speech. I'm actually talking to the person that I'm saying it about versus doing just a video sitting there 
speaking this to everybody. You know what I'm saying? Putting this it out is, in the world. This is a real time of how I feel and about And a real the interaction with somebody. And I feel like yeah. people, if, you, if, you're, if you're smart, you know how to separate the two. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I really feel about it. We got to stop the interview, tell you about our partners at Odd Socks. Well, first of all, let's check out the brand new collab. Look at these. The bootleg Kev sock. You see my pink ass face on those fucking socks? Nobody wants to buy those. We're going to figure out a way to give them away, though. Uh, but look, Odd Socks the most comfortable socks in the world. Um, and the best thing about Odd Socks is they're our family, man. I've been rocking with these guys for about 10 years now, and I will not wear anything else on my feet. Like, I swear to God, I'm about to take my shoe off. I'm about to take the... Look, what is this? It smells great, too. That's an odd sock right there. That's an odd sock basic. You know what I'm saying? We fuck with odd socks. You should too. They got the crazy licenses. We're talking about Nickelodeon. Shout out to Patrick. Motherfucking Cheez-Its. Baywatch. How about macaroni underwear? Look at these boys right here. Let's just crack these motherfuckers open real quick. What do we got in here? Come on, man. Yeah, a little Pop-Tart underwear. You know what I mean? Yeah. These are the Odd Socks basics, all right? So if you go to the website right now, order you some underwear, order you some socks, use the promo code BOOTLEGKEV. That's one word all together, BOOTLEGKEV, and you will save 20% off at checkout. Go to oddsocksofficial.com. One more time, that's oddsocksofficial.com, promo code BOOTLEGKEV, and you will save 20% off your order. Of course, we're presented by Odd Socks, and we are proud to say so, all right? Let's get back to the interview. To be What's next for you, man? I mean, you said you didn't want to share too much, but obviously the podcast is booming. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I, you got I, what, What's next for Sharp? Probably movies, man. Movies. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Any interest so far? Any? any... Yeah. Yeah, I got some. I'm about to go work on next month. Wow. Yeah. Acting. Yeah. I Why like not? it, man. Yeah. Trying something, man. Just hey, man. They hit me. I like it. I think it's something that's fitting for myself. I'll roll with it. Have you already shot some stuff or is it as is it still yeah, on the Yeah, I've had way? to do a couple of like, you know, little monologues and shit like that. So, you know, I didn't just get picked. I had to kind of run through it a little bit. They saw me, but Was that I difficult? Didn't. Like I always wonder what that's like to like sit nah. down and like sit in front of some strangers and be like, nah. "Hey, do this." No. Nah. nah, natural. Nah. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful, man. So you're gonna be in movies. The podcast is going crazy. Yeah, man. How many times you dropping once a week, right? Just uh I just signed on with um a device company called Hamilton Devices, man. They make uh, a lot of different like weed devices, shit like that. You know what I mean? Like they they they're fucking with me. So like I've just been getting different endeavors. Zushi, Tinko, man. Shout out to them, man. Been my people since day one. Like just you know what I'm saying? Just different endeavors. Manscape. Shout out to Manscape, man. Go if you fucking with Manscape, go on there. Hey man, use the use code the Sharp code. Tank. Shout that shit out. Yeah, use the code Sharp Tank, man, to get fifteen percent off all your merchandise. People be fucking with it, man. Like I got, I got, I got hey yo, that shit works, that, and yeah, that shit works. I got good sponsors that stand behind me. Go to Hamilton.com. Use Sharp fifteen, man, to get fifteen percent off the whole store, and they got some crazy ass devices. Like, just check it out, like weed devices. I, yeah, the shit that I fuck with, like is. Like I like top notch everything. So if people are looking for top notch, everything that I'm sponsored by is top notch. Have you turned down some shit because it didn't really align with your like maybe your brand or of like? Of course. Of course. Like if like yo Adams like hey we have a sponsorship here for Sharp Tank, I'm good. I ain't, I ain't promote. You know that what shit. I like about Adam is because he been around it, so he he knows what to pitch my way already. I haven't had anything he gets that, it. Yeah, yeah, I haven't had him bring me anything or even Josh bring me anything that's like. Hey, you Wild, know, do out this, the way, yeah, yeah, like do this, like it might be fitting. I'm like, nah, like I ain't, no. Nah. They bring me everything's been great. Um, I've known Adam for a long time, man. I, always been a great dude, stand up dude. Mm. What do you think are some of the biggest like misconceptions about Adam? Because I feel like he kind of gets misjudged people, people a lot. Think, people think that he's a, a culture vulture, but in all in all, bro, he, he giving motherfuckers a chance and it worked. That's what fucks people up. It's not that they feel like that. It's mm -hmm. that the truth is he did. He took a crazy ass chance and it worked. Mm. That throws everybody off. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, oh, shit, he didn't have to plan it. He didn't have to do this. No, the piece is just kind of. It all happened super organically. And super fast. And something, kudos to him for having like that eye for saying like, oh, shit, this dude Sharp might be great if he did a podcast. Tried or, me. Shit, Boom. AD did AD, numbers. Yeah, 100%. first one sitting at two million now. That's crazy. First man. one I ever did with Blue Jasmine. Shout out to you, baby, wherever you are. 
Hope your career, hope everything booming for you. Hope you still, if you're selling them clothes, holla at me. I know you're still selling clothes. What, what's been your biggest interview so far, views wise? Or views episode? wise? Yeah, views wise. Uh, the biggest episode I did was Tucker. I think that was sitting at almost, it's headed to 3 million. That shit was crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that shit was Fuck. crazy. Fucking cluster fuck, bro. Because <laughs> that was like two or three, right? That was like quit. That was like one of the first few. Yeah, that was, I want to say, yeah, that was some of the first, that was some of the few. I just remember like, it was like viral and like my boy's like, yo, this dude from Phoenix got roasted. <laughs> I, like, I watched that shit. I was he like. He's cool, man. He's cool. It ain't nothing against him. I just, he didn't know me. So hey, and, I, and he turned it into a bag. I think he was selling like toe sucker shirts or, or hats or, or some hats shit. Or something. Yeah, I don't. As he should, right? Fuck do, it. Do your thing. Do what you got to do, bro. I'm not here to stop you. I'm not here to hate on you. Sell well, them. The movie uh, hopefully coming soon. Movies, acting, Netflix shows. Trying to do everything, bro. Would you ever do um, TED Talks? I feel like you'd be like a great like inspirational speaker. Like you know how they hire people to go speak to like conferences yeah, and people. For like, sure. would you ever do that shit? Yeah, for sure. I feel like you should do a TED I Talk. I think man. it'd be I think it'd be dope, man. I think you know just to kind of open people up to my philosophy and hopefully they can open me up to theirs. You know, I think that's what it's all about, man. Mm -hmm. Just coming together and sharing new ideas, new things. And you know, it doesn't it shouldn't really matter, man. Your background, man. It should matter, you know, where your mind's at. Yeah. And where you're trying to head to, where you you're going, knock, you can't where knock, you can't knock nobody for really trying to to, to take a change to it. That's fair, man. Come you on, should. Man. I feel like you should. Um, you should do like a piece of content like once a month, like where you're just like you have like a monologue, or you have just like a where it's not necessarily an in, interview, but it's you just yeah. sh sharing a tidbit, man. Yeah. Some motivational words. Some. Yeah, I was talking to. Uh, I think I was talking to uh, Trev. I was talking to Trev. Shout out to Trev. Does uh, he's a cameraman at No Jumper, and me and him was talking because me and him, we worked together a lot, like on the vlogs and shit like that. Right. Like he would do vlogs, like he would take me whatever. You know what I'm saying? We do the vlogs together, and they would go up. Yeah. And he was telling me, he said, "Man, you should do something like that." You know, and we were we were talking, so I don't know, we might have something in the works. You know, me and him just got to sit down and. No, I think that shit would go crazy, like, especially like on out. TikTok, all that shit. That shit would go up, man. Yeah, everybody already clips my, my shit anyway. Might they well clip it. it. You yeah, might as well. They, they clip it anyway already. 100%, man. Uh, anybody uh, that you want to shout out? Uh, obviously, we talked about Las Vegas. Any any Vegas MCs or San Diego MCs you're fucking man, with that you want to show some love to? Listen, man. Shout out to all of Dago. Shout out to all of Vegas. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody across the motherfucking country. Man, shout out to No Jumper. Everybody that work at No Jumper all the way to the man who pressed the button on the camera. I love y'all, man. You know what we doing. You know where we at, man. What time zone we on, man? We're on the Bootleg Care Podcast, My man. bro, I appreciate you. you. Last question. Better Mexican food between L.A., San Diego, and an underrated candidate in Las oh, Vegas. Easy. San Diego the best. I think San Diego is the best Mexican San food Diego in New York. Best, I agree. I, I got That's that was easy, bro. And you can just cross the border and go to Tijuana, and it gets we, way better, bro. Man, I'm telling you, bro, it ain't nothing like it.